Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. So this is lesson number six, I think. Uh, and uh, I thought based on what we covered last week, which was a little quite, I mean, a quite a, 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 a little complicated uh, as far as the what we learned. So I thought maybe we we go over that a bit more and then uh, add just a small piece to it uh, from what we've learned from last week. So let's do a quick recap. Um, what do you remember from last week's uh, halakha about uh, this sentence? Uh, anybody that remembered anything that we learned at all, anything, it doesn't matter. However small, what did you learn from your notes? Did you have your notes in front of you or if you went through the recording or what did you what did you catch or you remember oh, from the last? Structures of the sentences. Very good. Well, we talked about struct how a sentence is structured, right? In Arabic. Very good. Okay. Uh, how is it structured? Why? How? How is this? How? How? You know, what are the um, the three major uh, structures? Really, isn't it? Three major yeah. structures of the Rafa. sentence. Right. Rafaun. Very good. Uh, nasab. Nasab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a jar. Jar. Masha Allah. That's 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 improvement. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> So, Rafa, uh, Nasab, and Jar. Okay, so today we're going to cover that a little bit more, in a bit more detail, to get we have a clear understanding of, of these kinds of sentences, inshallah. So, uh, anybody remember what anybody remember what Rafa was, or Marfu, for example? Anybody remember that? The dua. The dua. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, it's the dua in the sentence, right? Now, what happens if there is no dua? Then what? You know, it's, for example, the sky is blue, right? The sky is blue. So there's no doer. I mean, the sky is not doing anything. It's just blue. Okay. Maybe we have to contextualize it. Uh-huh. And see. We'll learn that today. Okay. So, so that's an example of something that we didn't talk about last week, but there is a rafa in there. Okay. So the sky is blue. There's a rafa in there. Uh, but we need to understand what, what that is. Okay, anything else that you remember from the from last week? Anybody anybody remember anything else? So Rafa is the doer. What's the second one? Details. Nasa, nas, yeah. Nasab, yeah. What, what, what is that? What does that describe? What is that about? What's details. Um, details, very right, good. Okay, right, so right. it could be that, uh, uh, so the details, uh, especially if, if this is a jumla fi'liya, right? So especially with Jumlah, yes, there's some details about, you know, what happened and all that. So the details is in Nasab. Okay. And then there's another uh, part of, you remember that I mentioned the, the sentence that there's no doer, like the sky is blue. Okay. So where is the details on that one? So in that case, that kind of sentence, the details is called something else, okay, which we will learn as well today. Okay. Uh, and in that case, it's not Nasab, which is a bit confusing. So that gets a bit confusing. So, so we have to we'll talk about that a little bit as well. What about jar? What's jar? Possessive. Yeah, the possessive. Okay. So today we're going to extend that a bit more. All right. Now there's two kinds of sentences. And if you remember the two kinds of sentences that we talked about. What are the two kinds of sentences? In a Say it again. Jumla shubul. Uh, okay, so there's there's uh, jumla is the is the Arabic uh, term for sentence. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's something, just jumla something, and jumla something else. Jumla ismiya. That's jumla, right. Jumla filiya, right? Filiya. Okay. Filiya. Very good. Filia. Very good. So so you've got the uh, the jumla or the sentence that start with a noun, with the ism rather. Okay. And then you've got the jumla that starts with the fi'il. Okay. So uh, jumla ismiya is like the, the technical term for it is nominal sentence. Okay? That means there's names everywhere. That's the that or, or isim everywhere. That's the jumla ismiya. And then jumla fi'liya is the sentence that has an action in there, that has a fail in there. Okay? So that's jumla fi'liya. And normally the structure is that it starts with the fail. Okay? So that's jumla fi'liya. Okay, very good. Okay, so let me share my notes. I'm going to put this. I did not put the the this notes up because this notes is going to present both halakas. This note is for lesson five, halakah five, and halakah six. So, uh, so I'll put this up once you know once we add anything to it during the during the lesson, and 
uh, make this bigger and then share the screen. Okay, so so the as as you can see, we've got uh, you know Joomla failure. Uh, actually, actually, there's there's one more thing that we we talked about as well. So the Joomla is the sentence, right? And then there's parts of the sentence with the short build Joomla, okay, which is the fragments of the sentence. Short means parts of or sections of. So uh, 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 short build Joomla, uh, uh, short build Joomla, so rather. Uh, is the section or fragment of the sentence. We'll talk about that as well. Okay, we're going to use that understanding uh, in a bit. Okay. All right. Now, the first change I'm going to make, uh, again, I apologize because what happened is that after I explained this last week, I went through a lot of references and suddenly realized that more commonly you'll find, remember I said that the ref ref uh, uh, nasab and jar are called status. Remember that? I remember I, I call them status. I found that most of the references, especially the one that's teaching Arabic, they don't call them status, they call them case. Okay? They call cases. So, so for example, uh, halatul, rafa, uh, uh, for example, like is the case where it's rafa, okay? and so on. So I'm going to change that. That's why I, I didn't put this notes here. I'm going to change that to this is this case, in other words. And it's the same, understand, it's just that I'm changing the term because if, in case you come across something online, you'll find the same word used. So it won't confuse you. And it's, it's called case in every time. Uh, you, you'll notice in the references and online as well. So, so ism has many properties. One of the properties of the ism is its case. Okay. And case really has to do with the role of the ism. What is doing in the sentence, right? Remember we talked, that? we talked about that? What is the ism doing in the sentence? I and mean, it's the same thing. So there are three major roles of the ism. There are many, but there are three that we're going to talk about today. First, remember the doer, right? We talked about that, right? So ism is a doer. And literally, rafa or mar, uh, raf'un simply uh, also means the one that's highlighted. Rafat means the ones that's raised. Okay? So when you're talking about something that's raised, usually when the there is a doer in a sentence, guess which word is raised, which word is highlighted, is the doer of that sentence is highlighted. So that's why it's called Rafat. Okay, it's called Rafat. Uh, okay. So, and how do you know it's Rafat? How do you know that that word is Rafat? You know because the last consonant of the word Okay, has a dhamma on it, has an u on it. So whenever you say an u at the end, okay, uh, it's a, most likely it's a, a rafa. Okay? It's a sign that is a rafa, the dhamma at the end of the word. Okay? Now, so this case in technical terms is also, also called the nominative case. Don't worry about that it's a fancy word, but in case you come across it, it's called the nominative case, which is also in Arabic, this is the marfu' case. Okay. Rafa is in that. See, if you notice, that's Rafa right there. So marfo means this is, you know, the nominative case. This is the case that involves uh, Rafa. Okay. So it's, that's called marfo. Okay. So uh, for example, to give an example. Okay. So here's the sentence here. The student drank chocolate milk in the kitchen. Okay. The student milk, uh, drank chocolate milk in the kitchen. Okay. All right. So obviously the rafa, the mar, the, the isim marfo. In other words, here, okay, isim that's marfo here is the student. Okay. That's the doer, correct? Okay, isim marfo. Very clear and okay. no problem there. So if we can spell, anybody know what the word for uh, student in Arabic is? What is the word for student in Arabic? Time to look into a dictionary. If you have your dictionary or you know how to look up a dictionary, for example, or look on tra Google Translate. Try that. Let's see what's this what's the Arabic word for uh student? Who come come up come up with it first? Who's who's quick enough to find it first? On your resources that, that was taught in the haraka. <laughs> Where do you find those things? Google Translate, go for it. 
who's found it? I'm going to change this to Arabic now. And we're ready to write the word in Arabic. Just uh, yeah. Yes, Talib. Very good. Okay. So since we say the student, then how do we say it? Since it's the students, what do we add to Talib? What do we add to it? To say it's the student. Al. 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 Yeah, you add Al to it, right? You add Al to it. Oh, the. the, right? The student. Okay, all right, very good. So Al, right? So you write it. Now remember, you all already have your Arabic set up on your computer. You can start writing on it as you watch, for example. Okay. So al al and then uh talib, right? So okay, uh, let's see who wants to try this. Those of you uh, who are learning, uh, Sister Hina, you want to try? How do you spell it? Where should I type? Al and then Alif. Alif. Mm -hmm. Alif. Mm -hmm. Lam. Lam. And B. Ba. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. Al talib. Okay. Now we know that the student, correct, is Rafa, is Isim Marfu. We know that, right? So how do we indicate that? What do we put? We say the last consonant, right? The last letter has a what? Ooh, um, my wife got the right answer. Dumma. 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 All right. So we put a U. Okay. Al Talibu. So now we know that in the sentence, if this sentence, if we were to translate this to Arabic, okay, in, and I won't do it right now, I'm just focusing on the isim right now, right? The isim marfu here. <clears throat> it will look like this. Okay, It will look like that. That's what it, it, it is. The talibu. Al talibu. Okay? Have you got that? Any questions about that so far? Clear? It's, this is isim marfu, right? This is the uh, isim that is rafa. Isim marfu. All right, so, okay, now remember, I asked the question as though, what about sentences that goes like, you know, the sky is blue, okay? Uh, for example, okay? Now, this is an example of what? This is an example of a jumla. What? It's me, isn't it? Because why? Because everything in there is are all ism. Do you see that? Okay. Which one is the ism here? The sky and blue. Right? The sky and blue. Now, what happened to the is? What, what happens in Arabic to is? So this is very important. Let's write that down. What happens to the is? Okay. We'll have, have to ask our experts here, Brother Abdurrahman and, and Mahfuz. How that goes in Arabic, but let's let's see. What do you think happens to the is? The Rahman and uh, and uh, Mahfuz want to help our students here. Go ahead. So the is is, is you understand it by the meaning of the sentence itself. It is not written. Hmm. You really got that? Sama uzarqa. So the is in Arabic, in Arabic sentence, is not written. Okay? It's understood. The is mm -hmm. is understood. So because especially blue, because, yeah, go ahead. Brother, of the, of the, because oh. blue is a description for the sky. So mm. you don't need to say is. Right? Remember, mm -hmm. the, remember in Arabic, the blue in English is adjective, but in Arabic is an isim. Right? And it is an isim because what? Because it this is a quality, it's a name, right? It's in basically our names. And blue is a name of a quality of the sky, right? And therefore it's also an isim. So you got two isims next to each other, the sky and then blue. And there's no there's no is in the Arabic language. I really got that. Mahfuz, you wanna add to that anything, brother Mahfuz? Yeah, yeah, nothing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just this it, blue is a, or may, you may call it sifa, which is a, I will translate sifa, not really sifa, but something sifa, something that describes the 
Right, right, right. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so just a description. Actually. Yeah, and remember what you said, like any idea and descriptions are ism, correct? Everybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and ism is the name of, of people, person, an animal, a thing, an idea, concept, right? Are all isms, right? And more, right? Uh, an adjective or quality, there's all isms. So sky is blue. Uh, and this example of Jumlah Semiyah, right? This is an example of Jumlah Semiyah. Same like here, the student is smart. Okay, the student is smart. Okay, so here's what we're going to add to what we learned so far. Remember, we just said that the sky is blue. Example, sky is blue. Uh, there is no doer, is there? Because there's no action, isn't it? Right? There's no action. Same here. There is no doer. Either. Here. Yeah. Because the student is smart. It's not like the student is smarting. No, no, we're not doing that. The student is smart. So there's no doer. Okay? Oh. All right. Yeah, I ahead. have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Like uh, in first example, um, the sky is blue. Mm -hmm. um, and in the second example, the student is a smart. So mm -hmm. we know who is a smart. It is already right. mentioned that a student is a smart, right? right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the sky is blue. Does it also give us hint of the maker or creator? Is it something like that? Mm, not really. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, there's no illusion or okay. there's no indication. It's just saying it's a, it's just a property. You it's know, the big. ball is big or the table is huge. I mean, there's no, you know, it's basically an isim describing another isim. Okay. Yep. There's basically actually that. There's no. Okay. So the the way okay. to yeah, go ahead. I think that's the Jumla Ismiya is a, in that case is what is called Mubtada and Khabar. So the that's where we're going at. Okay, here we go. Tells you something that's Khabar in maybe something in news or something or describe, uh, give you something new about something. So the blue yep. describe or give you news that, about the sky that it is blue. So it's that way. Right. Okay. So that's the new thing that we're learning today. So thank you, Brother Mahfuz. So the new thing we're going to learn today where there is a marfo, is a marfo, okay, has to do with another kind of uh, structure of the sentence, especially jumla ismiya, okay? So the sentence is, the sentence, the jumla ismiya can be divided into the subject, okay? And in English, this is the name of the English. The subject, which is Arabic, is called the muqtada. Okay, it's called the Muqtada. We're going to translate that in a minute. Okay. And the predicate in English. Okay. Subject and predicate. Okay. So predicate essentially is a fancy English word for some description of something or something that completes the meaning of the subject. Okay. So the predicate is something that completes the meaning of the subject. So the predicate is also the called the, in Arabic, it's called the Khabar. Okay. It's called the Khabar. So let's go ahead and uh translate uh okay let's let's you guys see if you guys can uh, uh, uh put a little arabic into here so go ahead and go change your arabic your arabic uh your computer to arabic keyboard now let's write what muqtada al muqtada okay so again al the subject so al muqtada let's see if we can uh what do you call it uh, right there. Who wants to try? Who wants to go? Brother Sakit, you want to try? Al Muqtada. See if you can figure out what the letters are for the uh, Al Muqtada, the subject. Yeah, in this case, in Arabic. Who wants to try? Brother Sakit, what do you think? Al, we got the Al there. Let me make this a little bigger here so you guys can see. Okay. Okay. Al, then what? And a meme, right? Very meme. good. Al mu, okay, mub. So mub. what do you think? Yeah, mum, um, mum, meme with the dhamma, right? Yep. Uh, uh, al, uh, uh, yep, exactly. Meme with the dhamma. Very good. Al, uh, oops, actually, I wanted to put. Let's let's put the letters first. Let's put the letters first, and then we'll oh, then uh, then uh, then ba, right? Very good. Al mub, okay. And then ta. Uh, okay. 
uh, mubtada mubtada oh, oh sorry sorry you're right mubtada ta mm. next is is next ta mm. right mubtada yeah. and then mubtada and da, very good da, da. yeah yep mubtada okay now you have to add something else to make it complete it's a mubtada okay of the apostrophe here something so it's the uh hamza you have to hamza now because the hamza you cannot put hamza just by itself in Arabic, you do put Hamza unless it's in the middle. When is it in the beginning or at the end, what happens is you put the Hamza on top of the Alif. Okay? So you find on your computer something that can put Hamza on top of the Alif here somewhere. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, anybody find it? Uh, where is that thing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Al Mubtada. That's how you write it. Okay, it's Al Mubtada. So let's uh, put the the dhamma. Oops, the dhamma. What if you only put an alif? Uh, yeah, you can't put an alif because then it becomes something else. Uh, okay. So it has to be yeah because then it becomes like a dan, which doesn't make sense. Al Mubtada. So okay. so you you put a hamza on top of it to say it's Al Mubtada. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that's why you put you put the alif there. So uh, let me make sure I've got my my knee is not working here. Let me see. Al mubtada, mub. Ah, it keeps doing that. That's not right. Anyway, al mubtada. Uh, my keyboard is not working, so I'm not worried about that. Al mubtada. Oh, what about the khabar? Al khabar. Yeah, let's see if we can put that. Who wants to go? Al khabar. Khabarra. Uh, yep. Al. Don't forget al. And then khaba and ra, okay, al al khabar, and that's what it looks like, okay. Uh, actually, that's not that's not what it looks like. I missed the al kha, which is a kha al khabar, so it should be kha ba and ra. There we go. Make that bigger, and that's what it is. Okay. Now, what you'll find out is that both in the case of when the uh, word is khabar uh, uh, of the mutada in other words it describes the quality of the mutada completes the meaning they are both rafa okay they are both isim marfu okay so for example here's an example uh the sample of the student is smart right so atalibu okay atalibu zakiyun that's supposed to be an un there zakiyun Okay, so that the student is smart. And remember, there is no is. Right? So as a, a student, basically a student, the student is smart. Literally, that's what it means. <laughs> the student is smart. Or oh, some smartness. Okay? Mm -hmm. Atalibu. Mm -hmm. So it's atalibu. Uh, and atalibu, uh, um, or you can say talibu, zakiyun as well. Okay, You can get rid of this as well. You can... Yeah, uh, there, there's something, there's another edition, but don't worry. Uh, let's leave the alif lam there for now. Okay, al talibu the kiyun, for example, right? So al talibu the student is smart, the kiyun. All right, so what do we learn? Very quickly, rafa uh, al marfu isim marfu are in two cases. Okay, when the isim is a doer, right? And second is when the isim is both what? When the same is in is both a subject of the sentence and predicate, predicate or khabar of the sentence, right? When that happens, it's rafa. It's all u. Okay. Later we'll do an, an example. Actually, we can do example right now if you want. Uh, okay. Can you find the rafa? The is it marfu in this ayah? Okay. Let's find the isim marfu in this ayah. This yakadu al barku yaqtafu absarahum kullama adha lahum shawfi. Okay, so who sees the first isim marfu? In other words, either the doer or the subject, right? Or the khabar. Anybody sees it? You got to find the isim here in the ayah. Al -barku. Yeah, Al Barku. Very good. Okay, Al Barku. Al Barku is what? Why do you think Al Barku here? 
البرقو نبدي نو المينينغ اوف ذا برقو ذا لايتنينغ اوكي ذا لايتنينغ تيكس اواي ذير لايت ذير سايت اوكي سو سو This is an uh, this is a description. Allah describes this. We'll talk about this later, inshallah, of the hypocrite. May Allah uh, protect us from becoming one. Okay. So this is an example of uh, the hypocrite. One of the characteristics Allah describes very beautifully in the Quran. Okay. okay. Uh, anybody else find uh, uh, an another one? Let's find one more. Anybody find? Yeah, there's a small hint. That other one is in the second line. Hmm. No, second one, uh, brother. My first is the second line. You really see it? No one sees it. No one sees it. It's a name. It's an isim, right? Anybody see an isim in there? Isim marfu. You see me? You see it? You have your glasses on? <laughs> so, and Isim starts with Alif and Lam. So, yeah, always my wife is always right again. <laughs> So Allah, yes, <laughs> Allah who, right? Allah who? So who again? The Dhamma is in Marfu. Okay. Walau sha Allah who la la dahab bi sami. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's go on. So let's is in Marfu or uh, Rafa. Let's go to the next one. Okay. The next one is the detail. Okay. The detail. So the detail. Uh, so the isim, the detail is actually essentially about the isim that describes the details of the object of the act. Okay, mm -hmm. the details of the object of an act. Okay, so in other words, if you're doing something, any detail about the, what you're doing is nasab. Okay, any details about anything you're doing is considered nasab because it's the details, right? So, uh, uh, so for example, uh, and, and, and by the way, before we go on, uh, the last consonant, when it's nasab, the last consonant of the word is pronounced with a fatha, ah. Okay, it's pronounced with a ah instead of u. U, remember, is isim marfu. Isim uh, mansub is called isim mansub, al mansub, okay, uh, is uh, which of nasab is in there, nasab, okay, same, same. Uh, the other form of uh, al nasab it, 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 it has a last consonant ah on top of it. Okay, so the technical term, those of you who are interested in the technical term, is called the accusative case. Okay, so this is the case where it's called the accusative case. Okay, here's an example. Remember the same student drank chocolate milk. Okay, so they can drink chocolate milk. Okay, I'm gonna put it there down there. So where is the Remember, it's the details or the object of the act. Okay, it's the details about the action or the object of the action. So in this case, what is the object of the action? In the kitchen. Detail. In the kitchen? It's the is the detail correct? Yep, yep. Is the detail? Yeah, that's the detail. Yes, that, yep, yep. And right, right. And yeah. Chocolate. Uh, and chocolate milk. So, which, so, so, the, the, so, but first of all, remember what did that student do? Drank, mm -hmm. right? Okay. What is the object of the drinking? That means the one Coffee. that you are acting on. Milk. The milk. milk. That's what it is. Okay. So, the chocolate milk is actually uh, what do you call it? The uh, 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 it's called the uh, isim mansub, right? The isim uh, man, uh, mansub, yeah, isim mansub, yeah, is the object of the drinking, in other words, right? So the student drank chocolate milk, okay? Now, all of this is also the details. This is also the details, yes, but don't worry about that. This is the whole thing is the details, yes, but the object, of course, here yeah, in this case is the chocolate milk, 
Okay. All right. So somewhere we expect that there is an ah in there. Okay. There is an ah in there. Uh, and of course, it's probably uh, it's probably uh, 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 the milk here yeah? because chocolate is a character of the milk, right? So the milk is one that's been drunk. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. So that's the second one. So okay. So that's an example of the second one. So uh, object, uh, and in, uh, in Arabic, sometimes they call mafoul bihi. Mafoul means something that's acted on. But we don't we don't go into that for right now. Okay. Let's go to the third one. So this one, there wasn't any, any change from the previous lesson. Yeah, this one, no change. This one, I've added a few things. Yeah, so this is a, a bit of a change here. So remember when I said that the uh, jarun, which is the third the, the third type of uh, word, okay, third type of case, right, is called jarun, okay, where uh, it is when you see with the last consonant, the last letter has an e. Okay, when the last letter has an E, that means it's a uh, jar. Okay, has an E, it's a jar. Okay, so what is jar? What does it mean? Okay. Jar literally means something that is attached to. Okay, something that's attached to. So, uh, so uh, in the, the technical term for it, it's called the genitive case, it's called. Okay, uh, al ismul majroor is called. Okay, it's al ismul. Majroor. So jar, majroor. Same word here. Same root word. Okay. All right. Uh, so now, what? there are two cases where the isim is jar. There are two cases. The first case is when the isim uh, is after a harfun jar. It's after a harf. Now, you guys know harfun jar already from the previous lesson. Okay. Give me an example of harfun jar. What's an example? Harf, harf and jar. Preposition, in other words. What's an example of a word that's called a harf? Off. Off. For example, right? Off. What's another one? Give me another one. What's in. another example? Of? In. Harf, in. Very good. Okay. What's in in Arabic? So uh, let's write the Arabic here. So what's in? Let's see an example of in. How do we write it? How do you write in? Is fi, isn't it? In is fi. So uh, where's my ya yeah, here? Yeah. Okay, fi. Okay, it's an example of in. So we, we this is from the previous lesson. You can check it out. So let's see uh, another one. Always give me just one more. What's another one? What's what about with? What's the arafun jar for with? It's just one letter. With when I'm with my friend, or you know, my uh, my wallet is with me, for example. The, the, the letter is B when you say B, right? So B is uh, Harfunjar. That's another example. Is okay, from okay. Hmm? Say it again, Brother Assistana, Go ahead, say it again. Uh, it's from Harfun yes, Jar. Yes, from Min. Very good. Okay. So uh, Min. Yep. Write that down here. Okay. Yep. Very good. Okay. I'm Min Malaysia, for example. Uh, okay. So we'll go into it in a minute. Uh, min can also mean off. Uh, min, can, min has several meanings. One of them is uh, from. And it could also mean off as well. Okay. So, so let's go on. So now, what did I say? Uh, when you have a half jar, the word that comes after it is jar. Which makes sense, of course, right? When you when you have half jar, the word that comes after it has to be jar. <laughs> because it's half jar, right? So it's jar, wal majroor is called. Okay, You got a jar, and then the jar that comes after it. So for example, uh, in the kitchen. Okay, just that, not the whole thing. In the kitchen. Okay, fee, fee kitchen. Okay, fee kitchen. So kitchen, the ending letter of kitchen will have which vowel? A kasra, right? Will have e. Okay, 
will be isim. Uh, so the kitchen there is isim majroor. Okay, in the uh, it's called isim majroor. Okay, now here's where the second type of isim majroor. Okay, or uh, al majroor. The first remember is if it's followed by a harfun jar. The second type is when it uses when it is belonging to something. Okay, when it's belonging or is determined by something. Remember the chocolate milk we, we did earlier? Okay. And what did I say in the last lesson? In Arabic, chocolate milk is written in Arabic how? It's written milk of chocolate. Okay. It's written milk of chocolate. Now, guess what? There's a jar of, but it's not, you don't see it. You don't see the meaning in there. Right? So it's really uh, halab, which is milk. Okay, a chocolatey, for example, something like that, right? Which is the brother Abdul, Abdul Abdul Rahman or uh, Mafos. How do you say chocolate milk in Arabic? Let's see if we can write it down here. Chocolate milk. This is we're testing our chocolate. Bit level. Say it again. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So, but we're, we're doing uh, we're doing uh, uh, a chocolate milk of chocolate, meaning mudaf uh, ilay, mudaf wa mudaf ilay. So it'll be. So. How would you? I need brother Mahfuz help here. Yeah, brother Mahfuz here. Yeah, brother Mahfuz. Go ahead. Should we have halib chocolate? But halib. Yeah. Yeah. Halib chocolate. So it's very hard to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because chocolate is not an Arabic word, so uh, yeah. uh, chocolate is not an Arabic word. So there's no it's it's imported into Arabic to become chocolate. Okay, becomes chocolate. Now, of course, it's going to be pretty difficult to write. I don't even remember how it's written, but halib. Okay, so halib, which is milk. Okay, so it's milk of chocolate. Halib of chocolate. Okay, halib of chocolate. Okay, now. This is the after off. Remember the after off I said earlier in the lesson? This is the after off, which is, in other words, any word that comes after off is also jar. Okay. So, what did I say? Uh, uh, an example that, uh, uh, say it again? Yeah, exactly. Halib, halib chocolate. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. So, for example, what are some of the examples, some, some other examples? Other examples of uh, this structure okay, is like my teacher. Remember that? Right? My teacher is, he comes what again? Teacher of mine. Okay? Uh, so so the, the mind then has a kasra. Okay? The mind has a kasra. So... Uh, let's do a diff different, better example. Let's see if we can find something. Anybody, anybody can think of something that's like uh, after off that is that has that structure where you know it's off something. Uh, let me see if I can. My find book, it. maybe. Say it again. My I book. Say... Let, let's find something different from uh, mine. Uh, oh. Here's an example. Here you go. You can say Asir Lemon or Asir Burtokal, no Asir. Yeah. Zaytun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's a good example here. For example, messenger of Allah. Mm. Okay. All right. Now, this is very simple. We know how to write this in Arabic, right? This is very simple, right? We know how to write this. How do we write it in Arabic? Let's write this in Arabic. Messenger of Allah. So, it's Rasul, isn't it? Right? So, it's Rasul, Rasul, uh, Rasulu, right? Messenger, we know that, right? Messenger, then how do we write the right next one? Allah. Okay, now guess what? Where is the kasra? Where do you put the kasra? Rasul. Rasul, what's the, what's the vowel at the end of the last letter there? Rasul. No. Mm, it's Rasulu. Okay, it's Rasulu. But then, what we remember is after off, there is Jar. So, messenger of, you see that? Messenger of 
Allah. Hmm, Allahi, Rasulullahi. You see that? Eh? Rasulullahi. So you say Rasulullahi. Why do you say Rasulullahi? You say Rasulullahi because this is a example of after of. Structure of after of. So, uh, and remember what uh, this is majroor. Okay? So Allah is ism, lafzul jalalah, ism uh, majroor. And 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 let's one more example just to make it. Uh, we know that in this case the the kitchen is majuru because of the in right fee, but this is the second example right. So let's let's take this example put it down here because uh, where's the majuru here? Uh, okay, so another example. Oh, up here. And the example of at the off, okay. Another example of after off is uh is this one, isn't it? Oh, make it bigger here. So this is the after off. I want to put down here actually, and this one is before that. So this is the uh, kitchen here. Uh, where is it? Okay. okay. Both chocolate and the kitchen, I say majuru. Okay, so this one first. Kitchen is majuru because it occurs after roof in, yeah, in the kitchen. And chocolate is, is a majuru because it takes the form of milk of chocolate. Okay. So here's some other example. Teacher of mine. Message of Allah. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Imam of a masjid. Okay. This is pretty easy. Let's see if we can write this in Arabic. Who wants to try? Uh, Hina or Harish or Brother Sakit? Anybody who wants to try? So how would you write this in Arabic? Imamul Masjid. Mm -hmm. Imamu. Very good. Imamu Masjidin. So uh, uh, later we'll, we'll see why it's not Imamul Masjid. Imam of any Masjid. Imamu, Imamu Masjidin. So here it's um, uh, to find the, this one here. So it's Ima. Okay. Ima. Mu. The Imamu. And then masjidin. Now, now, anybody remember this other thing that we just learned? Masjidin. Uh, did we learn this one, guys? I've, I've forgotten now. Uh, okay. Imamu. Okay. Imamu. Oh, it's not doing it. Let me try. Imamu. Nah, it's not working. Okay. Imamu masjidin. Okay. So this one is uh, din, masjidin, right? Because it's a, it's a majuru, correct? Imamu masjidin. Same here, Rasulullahi, Imamu masjidin. Now, did we talk about a, uh, is him, uh, uh, special nouns and common nouns? Did we talk about that at all? Do you guys remember that? You might not actually. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's just put a special, a quick, a quick note here. Okay, quick note. We'll go into it later, okay? So there's a common noun, common isim, and a uh, uh, specific isim. Okay? So common isim is when any masjid, like, you know, any masjid, any book, okay? That's a common. The name book is, uh, 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 is a common isim because we use a tanween. Whenever we have a tanween, like this one here, Okay, uh, that means this is the common isim. Okay, it's a common isim. Let me make sure that tanwin is there. Capture the tanwin there. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Okay, okay, masjidin. Now, when you have a specific isim, you put an alif lam, the. Okay, 
is that mas it's that the masjid because you know of the masjid right so you say al masjidi or al al masjidi okay in uh, uh as a maj is a majuru okay so just a quick note so let's just add that here ah then then it's just a kasra correct it doesn't have termin so it'll it'll be as uh, you add that uh you say al uh mas G. So dal, the dal there has a uh, just a simple kasra. Al masjidi. Know that? Okay. So just remember that whenever you have alif lam, it's always uh, uh, a, a simple kasra or fatha or dhamma. When you have a, a common noun like any masjid, then it's Masjidin or Masjidan or Masjidun. Got that? Whenever you have the Tanween, it's a common noun. It's called Isim Nakira. Okay? Uh, so we'll do that again next time. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, so that's basically what I wanted to go over. Some changes, some refinements to what we studied last time. So to, to wrap up, okay, to wrap up, this whole concept that we just learned, uh, whether an Arabic Isim is Rafa, Nasab or Jar, it's called Halatul Arab. That's the the topic that we are talking about. It's called Halatul Al Arab. Okay, or the situation of its case. Okay, the situation of its case. Now, if you have an iPhone, I think in Android also. Uh, if you have an iPhone uh, with you, go ahead and or an Android, go ahead and find uh, Quran Al Arab. Okay, so find this. See if you can find it. Quran Arab on your phone. Install it. It's free. Okay. Quran Arab. So I'm gonna find mine. If you did you find it? Anybody find it? It's an orange colored app. Did anybody find it? Yes, yes, yes. No. 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 Uh, on your iPhone, right? Quran, K Q U R E. Android. Oh, you got Android? Uh, just type, just type I R A B. Maybe you should, you should be able to find it. Just type this one, I R A B, when you're looking for it. Rob. So if you type on your phone, Quran space, I Rob, I Rob, or A Rob, <laughs> because there's no apostrophe there. So you should be able to find the app. Space, I R A B. Yeah, um, got it. Quran, Arab, yeah. yeah, that's one. Yeah, go ahead and install it. Uh, and the other one on the computer, if you want to find it on the computer, this is the other one. So this one has the whole Arab on the computer. So this, if you can, if you if you want to uh, look it up, you find all the whole. Now let, let's take a look at it. If you uh, since we're looking at it here, so I'm gonna go to a. Uh, and open up and just I mean, look at the second one, just the, the Quran corpus is called okay, the corpus.quran.com, or you can use it on the app that you just install. Uh, and then go to uh, the first one, Al Fatiha, for example. Okay, go to Al Fatiha. So I'm just going to find it here, uh, and then. And then go to word by word, if you can see my screen, okay? word by word there. So Quran Iraq. And then go to Al-Fatiha, same thing. Just find the same thing. And it will tell you the grammar of each word on, uh, on the phone. Okay? So remember, what did we say about uh, 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 Majroor? Okay? Uh, for example, when we say uh, Bismi. Do you remember? Okay. Bismi. What's the harf jar? The huruf that's jar here. It's B. Just now, remember? Okay. B is a huruf jar. So the word that comes after it is also jar, correct? And that's why it's Bismi. Do you guys got that? It's Bismi. So see? Majroor, there it is. Well, Majroor, that's the what we're studying today. Okay. Bismi, okay. Ba, 
and then the preposition, and then the isim. Sami, sami, or samia. Okay, bismi. Okay. Same with this one. Bis, me, and then Allahi. Okay. Okay, now somebody tell me, why is Allahi and not Allaha? Why is it Allahi, not Allaha or Allahu? Remember the two rules of Majroor. What are the two rules of Majroor? First is it's got a huruf before it. Okay. But here we don't have a huruf before Allah He. So this is the other rule. The other rule is what? To become jar. What's the other rule? What did we write in our notes? Let's look at it. What's the other rule again? First is is it's got a huruf. Like in the kitchen, right? And then we have the after of, remember? Yeah, after of, like Rasulullah, messenger of Allah. Okay, Rasulullah. Okay, Rasulullah. Uh, Halib Chocolati. Okay, for example. Okay, uh, Imamu Masjidin. Oh, that's the second rule to make it major rule. Oh. Uh, jar. All right, let's take a look at this one. What do you think it is here? That's making majroor. Make it jar. Allah he. Why we say Allah he? Because it's. Is it majroor? Yeah, yeah. Why is it? Why is it? Is it majroor? Where is the. The it one after that... Harfunja, yeah, Har Harfunja, yes, we got that after, but here we've got remember this this one here. Okay, so this one, this word here, Rasulu, is called the Mudaf. Okay, Rasulullah, Rasulu is called the Mudaf. Oh, God, hang on, sorry, let me get a bit here. Okay, it's called the Mubaf. Okay, so Rasulu, and then the one after that, which is the jar, is Mudafun Ilayhi. Okay, now let me just explain this quickly again. Okay, this is the after of Mudafun Ilay. Okay, is the after of the Mudaf is before the of. So, for example, Messenger of Allah. So, the Messenger is before the of. Allah is after the off. Okay? So, Rasulullah. Why? Because it's after off. Ah, but, but just now, where is the off? Okay? Where is Bismillahi? Yeah, Allahi. Yeah, exactly. Where is the off? What do you guys think? Where is the off? Name of Allah. Everybody got that? Isim? Sammi? Yeah, seen a meme. Name of Allah. Okay, so in or with B, with that's from in with. You say uh, uh, in Bismillah, okay, is with the name of Allah. After off, okay, after off. That's why it's Allah. He, okay, have we got that? One more, one more, one more. Let's take one more. Just, just take a look. See? So, this is Haratun Majroor. Okay, all right. So, let's go into another one. Let's do that. What about this one? Alhamdu Lillahi. Why Lillahi? Alhamdu Lillahi. Hmm. Anybody? Alhamdu Lillahi. Let's take a look at the Al Fatiha here. Just so that everybody not get confused. Okay. Alhamdu. Okay, first of all, 
Let's see if we can figure it out. What did I say about isim uh, jumlah uh, is, ismiyah? Maybe it starts with an isim. Okay. Is alhamdu an isim? Yes. Isim rafa. Yes, right. How do you know? How do you know it's rafa? Because of the dhamma. Yes. Alhamdu. Very good. Okay. All right. Now, why is this lillahi? Why is it majrur or jar? Why is the ha with the e? What are the two rules again? What are the two rules? Two possible rules to make it e. We got it? Our teachers want to jump in here? The first one is jar. No, the, the, this one. This one is jar. Why is why is lila hijar? Is the question. Because lillahi, the first lamb is not the part of the name Allah. Yes, yeah. that word. It's a little confusing. So yeah. this alam here, this harfun jar, la li. Okay, harfun jar li is harfun jar. We can add it here if you want. We actually got it in the previous lesson here, but li. Uh, where is the mutada? Uh, 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 here, I guess. E, B, Min, and the other one, of course, is Lam. It's also Harfunjar. Harf okay? So Harfunjar, Lillahi, because it's Harfunjar, therefore it's He. Okay? Anyway, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, what is. Ah, okay. One last one before we end. Okay, last one. Asirata. Asirata. Why ta? Asira. Why not asirati? Why not asiratu? It's a noun. It's an isim. Right? It's an isim. But why is it asirata? Ta. With the fatha. Because it is. It's a sign of it being rafa, nasab, or jar. Take your nose. Nasa. Nasab. My wife's right again. Okay. Now, what do we say about nasab again? Nasab is whether it's a detail, right? An object of what? The object of an action, correct? The object of a fail. Okay. So, for example, I kick the ball. So, the ball will have an ah. I kick the ball la. Okay. <laughs> I kick the ball la. I'm holding the kappa. Right? I'm holding the kappa. Why? Because the cup and the ball is nasab. Right? All right. Same thing here. Ihdina sirata. Okay. Show me, guide me, or guide us. Right? Guide us. Guide us what? Guide us. Asirata. Guide us to the path. Okay. Guide us to the path. So asirata is nasab. Because that's the object of the guidance. Okay. Object of the action. Anybody got that? And that's Nasab. Okay, Mansu. It looks like we might need a, a, another lesson here, but <laughs> but let, let's 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 close close with a quick example of uh we, we got that one just now. So let's let's uh quickly do this one here. Um any nasab here? Yeah, let's find the nasab. Nasab. Mm. Who sees a nasab? Yes! My wife is right again. Absara. Okay? Absara. So, where's the action? Where's the action? Yakhtafu. Okay? Took away. Okay? The lightning took away. Took away what? What's the object? Okay, took away what? Took away their sight. Absara. Okay, took away their sight. Yaktafu absara. Okay, all right. So that's nasab. 
Jar, last one, last one. Who's find a same majroor in here? A same majroor, guys. A same majroor. Use the two rules. Either it's after of, meaning it's mudaf mudaf ilay, or it's after a huruf in jar. Huruf. It's after huruf. See if you can find something that's after huruf. Or is an after off, and you got the majroor. There's a few here. Ah, ah, where is the absorbing him? Where, where, where? I'm sorry. Is... Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so my, my wife asked, Why is this one absorbed? And why is this one absorbed? Very good question. One is nasab, the other is yeah. jar. Oh. Yeah. Do you see any? What? What? Why is the second one jar? Why is the second one jar? Because it has possessive form in it. It sounds good. It's got what? Possessive form of it. Uh, no, not this one. This one doesn't have. It's the other rule. It's got a harfun jar in it. It's got a huruf. Where's the huruf? Where's the huruf? Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, Dr. Nick. This is yeah. a little bit of a tough one. Because yeah, why is in, it? Arabic, in Arabic, the word and uh -huh. carry the same thing. Yes. So yes. the word before absarihim. Is magrur, is majrur. And then wa, the word and means that both of them are majrur. Yes. So which one is it that's majrur? Because of what? Because of? Because of the B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So B sami. Wa apsi apsari. Yeah. So wa is a conjunction. But is the reason is, so that'll be complicated as brother Abdullah mentioned. But still, the reason is the same. Reason is that because there is a huruf. Okay, be sami, so that's a majuru. Okay, be sami is together. Okay, why not be sama? No, it's not, it's be sami. Yeah, okay, be sami and wa absari. Okay, because of the B, because the B is doing it to both. Okay, the B is going to both. So it's a little bit complicated, but still, same rule be sami, be absari. Is what it's saying to say, okay? Be sami, be absari. I think uh, you have to emphasize the the and is playing a role. Like uh, there is yes. called the the conjunction. Whatever follow that word, it will follow it. That's right. Arab. That's right. Follow so wa is also, also also playing a role, okay? Because in other words, wa means whatever happens before the wa. Follows what happens after the why as well. Okay, that's a very good point, brother Mafu. Thank you. Okay, so but the point is that yeah, it's it's Allah took away Allahu ladhaba bi samihim wa absarihim. That's why it's majrur e and e. All right, I think we we went a little bit past our time there, but uh, <clears throat> one last one. Ala kulli. What do you think that is? What's what's the rule there? Last one, last one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ala, 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 kulli shayin. Yeah, it's jar, isn't it? Right? Well, because of ala, yeah, on. Right? Ala kulli. Yeah, it's harfun jar. Ala is harfun, harfun jar as well. It's ala kulli. So it's why it's kulli. Now, you'll find that in the, in the Quran, Lots of harfunjar. Okay. And lots of also uh mudaf mudaf in You'll find it there as well if you if you study it. But the, the point is that now we, we have a slightly better understanding, hopefully slightly better understanding of how the sentence is structured, right? Uh and, and I think uh, we thank our, our teachers here for clarifying some of those finer points. Uh Jazakumla uh, Khairan. that's our uh lack of today. Oh, by the way, I was going to um I've been uh I think what we're going to do, uh, 
is we're probably going to change a little bit the halakha because I'm noticing that uh, we need a little bit of guidance in terms of how to build a society here. So I'm thinking maybe one week we have this Arabic, another week we we kind of put in between a, a bit of lessons from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu you know, from the life of the Prophet so that we learn how the Prophet built his society. Because we're kind of in that situation, we're building our small society uh, here in Duluth. I thought that might be a good idea that we, we do that. That way we don't, it's not too heavy. We have at least two weeks between the lesson. We can study. What, what, you guys, what do you guys think about that idea? Yeah, uh, so, idea. we'll get enough time to go through the lessons. And... Exactly, you have enough time to go through and kind of prepare for the next two weeks, you know, and, and, and study. And then in the meantime, you don't have to study when you, you know, when you discuss the seerah of the Prophet. You listen, you listen to a story. So it's kind of nice because you, list, you actually listen to a story and you get lessons from the story, which is kind of uplifting as well spiritually, inshallah, right? Rather than a heavy heavy, uh, I thought maybe Arabic lesson. So I thought that the lesson after the Arabic might be helpful, but once you go through 40 minutes of heavy <laughs> Arabic, sometimes it takes a toll on you. <laughs> so so I'm thinking maybe we'll lighten the, lighten the halakha a little bit. And also other people who are not in the uh, halakha can join, right? And, and listen to the stories as well, inshallah. So I thought we'd do that following uh, beginning and, and next week. So next week will be, you know, a, a story from the life of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah. Okay, Jazakum Khairan. Let's read the du'a. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Asr ibn Salaf. Qusr illa al-ladhi amanu amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Thank you so much everybody. You all have a great night.